I'd like to say um, Watamuli in uh, my Bindal Virugaba language, welcome um, to each and every one of you here and pay my respects to the two groups of traditional owners, the Walgaruga Bar Nation and the Bindal people and uh, to our creator and our elders past, present and emerging. And most importantly, to Rob uh, Duma and um, Rob, I've just met you for the first time today and I was here for five minutes and looked at the turtle and said, wow. So uh, Madam Chair said, Gracie, you've got five minutes, I said, to talk about 50 years. So um, I'll be very quick. Um, I've been attached to this wonderful university um, for 50 years. I was teaching at the, um, and it's impossible because I'm only 30, but um, I was teaching at the College of Advanced Education and, um, and they were getting ready to till the soil for James Cook University 50 years ago. I also started my general nursing training. I've been a clinical nurse for 50 years and a clinical midwife for 45. But most importantly, I've been a human rights activist. And uh, I did my master's and PhD through this wonderful university. And um, as a student, I had Professor Reynolds and um, Professor Noel Luce were my lecturers when I tried to start a BA. I always thought you had to be Einstein to get a university degree. But um, I thought oh, I could never do that. And they encouraged me. And so while I'm um, walking around on campus, I ran into my uncle, Uncle Koike Mabo, who was a big activist, and him and his lovely wife. And my parents were very close friends of theirs. And uh, I learned so much as a child uh, coming up uh, in uh, those uh, very important years. And he was always in the gardens. And one day he said to me, I'm in the library more than you, and you're the student. You need to start coming to the library. He said, one day, we're going to win land rights. And I don't have to tell all you learned people here that uh, he set the scene for the entire country, the Mabo um, High Court decision. And uh, I'm so proud to be connected to not only Uncle Koiki, uh, his late beautiful wife and his children. And on the turtle story, um, the shooting star is the Bindal Birugaba Nation totem. And I turned on the ABC radio last night and who did I hear was Professor Nakata speaking that they named a star after him. And for some of you that don't know, Professor Nakata is in charge of the Indigenous unit and his staff Manola's here today. And um, he said he was just so honoured because he received an Australian medal for his work in astrology. But what was ironic that they named a star after him and the star is the totem of the Bindal Nation. The Kabalamunga is the um, carpet snake, which is down further, uh, and that's the Juru uh, Birugaba totem as well. My 50 years with James Cook has been amazing. Um, they have um, the two different traditional owner groups that have not been, there's a, uh, a Watamuli Creek and Gundaloo Creek, both named after the traditional owners and having a wrap and a cultural protocol report. I've seen so many amazing changes at this university. I'll quickly tell you a story. Have I got two minutes left, Madam Chair? Um, the turtle. Uh, and um, I, I read quickly Rob's notes about entwining both First Nations uh, people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, into his beautiful artwork. And uh, the turtle is very significant, my daughter, is uh, both Aboriginal and Murray Island, and her children are Murray Island, and um, uh, she, her grandfather comes from the Murray Island, so Uncle Koike is her grandfather in cultural terms. I was pregnant with her, and he was talking about midwifery, pregnant with her 37 years ago, and there was a very significant function on if there's a death or a birth or a wedding, um, our men go out and hunt and gather, and mostly for turtle, sometimes dugong, but the environmentalists are saying that we're taking too much of the, um, uh, our traditional foods. And this particular evening, they went out uh, with the Torres Strait and Aboriginal elders, and my then partner, who was the father of my daughter, was on the boat. 
and they kept going out and they do the prayers before and they asked the creator to give them the one turtle. And they kept going out and the turtle kept coming up to the boat. This is all in my book. I won't tell you too much or you won't buy it. <laughs> and they kept spearing for the turtle and the spears kept just going everywhere. And the elder said, we must go back to shore. It's getting late. He said, somebody's doing the wrong thing by our L-O-R-E. He pointed to my then husband and said, you have received a gift from the creator. You can't take two gifts, which was your wife's having a baby. He said, that's news to me, because I didn't know at the time I was having a baby. But he made him get off the boat and he had to wait. And they went out and got the turtle and came back. The week after, I had the joyous news that I was pregnant for uh, 37 years ago with my daughter. And in our law, a child is a, a gift from the Creator. And everything that is given as a gift from the Creator, you must give back to Mother Earth. Mother Earth is our womb, and if you contaminate her, she ceases to create life. So that's a story that I pass down to my grandchildren, that you can't be greedy. We must all share and don't take two bites of the cherry. The Creator had given both my partner and myself uh, a child, 37 years of age, and uh, he knew, the elder, who was a traditional healer, said that he knew it was my partner that had been breaking the law, but he, he, unbeknown to him, he didn't know he was breaking the law. So what I want to say to Rob, it's a fantastic um, art display. I sincerely want to not only thank Rob, but each and every one of you, every time I come out, there's always wonderful people because art is healing and the whole world needs healing and we must repair Mother Earth because of what's happening and it takes a crisis for everybody to come together. I wish you well, Rob. I'm hoping that this is not the only um, exhibition you're going to do and the wonderful staff here at James Cook always put on a good show. Wadamuli and I hope to be at the next one in my retirement at Christmas. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much, Graceland. And I've already said to Graceland, and my staff will be really excited to hear that we could we should launch Graceland's book next year in the Marbo Library. So I'm sure everyone's really excited for that. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the Bindal people, and pay my respects to their culture and their elders past, present and emerging. I also acknowledge and pay respect to their direct neighbours to the north of Wulgarugaba people. Now, I just wanted to give a little bit of history here, and for some people, they will have heard me say this many times before, but 12 years ago, on the 21st of May, 2008, JCU launched its reconciliation statement, and to give effect to the university's commitment to reconciliation, the university named the library on its Townsville campus after Eddie Koiki Mabo, a Torres Strait Islander activist, a former JCU staff member and student. Koki Mabe was one of the most important historical figures to have spent time at this university. At that time, an artwork by Gail Mabe, his daughter, was commissioned by JCU and it hangs in the library today, currently on the first floor. This led to a conversation about how wonderful it would be to have an art exhibition of Gail's work in the library. And an exhibition of Gail's work was held the following year, in 2009, which was the first Eddie Koiki Mabo Library Art Exhibition. The rest, as I say, is history. So here we are 12 years later, and this is the 10th Mabo um, Art Exhibition we've had in the library. So there's a couple of years where we haven't been able to do it. Um, we do endeavour to hold an annual Indigenous art exhibition. Um, and it does usually coincide, of course, with National Sorry Day, the naming of the library, National Reconciliation Week and Mabo Day. And for reasons that we all know, we were not able to do that this year. Um, so in 2020, what we also had decided to do as part of JCU's 50th anniversary celebrations was to have an inaugural artist in residence program focusing on the library and its surrounds and focusing on those themes of people, place, knowledge and legacy. Townsville-based artist Rob Duma was selected from a strong field of applicants. Doing a residency during a worldwide pandemic is no mean feat and I'm sure Rob can speak to that. Um, he has actually spent months working in around the Marbo Library to produce artworks for this exhibition and far more time than we ever would have expected. 
And the benefits of that is that he's been able to engage with our diverse student body and our staff members. I remember when um, we had uh, a couple of Singapore staff members here earlier in the year and they were in the library and thought what a fantastic endeavour this was as well. So it's been a real bonus to have that engagement and to have those conversations and those insights which have been published on our social media accounts and Rob's social media accounts as well. Um, we made the difficult decision way back to not have that exhibition in May and so here we are three months later so we're really pleased to do this. We also have a virtual tour of the exhibition that's up on our Marbo um, Library Exhibition website that you can have a look through and there's also a virtual tour of inter our interpretive wall which is around the corner here as well. So we would like to take this opportunity to make sure you do spend some time having a look at the Marbo interpretive wall and Bronwyn's going to speak about that a little bit more later to fill you in. Um, that project does also provide us with a permanent presence in our library to highlight the university's connection to Koiki Mabo. It's something that library staff have been passionate about for a very long time and have wanted something more than um, just a poster to indicate what the Mabo story is all about. So to have that there is, is absolutely beautiful and of course it's um, no surprise to anyone that the fact that it showcases this wonderful building um, and its architectural style and how it sits into the landscape on this campus is just an extra bonus to us. The exhibition drawn to the Marbo Library will run until the 17th of September and Rob is also giving some artist talks over the next three weeks. Um, you can find details of that on our website, just click under events and you'll be able to register to come along to an artist talk and I'm sure Rob would be happy to accommodate people outside of that time as well um, if need be. Now, unfortunately, at the last minute, our Vice-Chancellor was not able to attend the launch, which she very much wanted to do. Um, earlier this year, we did actually record the Vice-Chancellor talking about the naming of the library in the Marbo Library Art Exhibition, and that's actually up on our Marbo Timeline website for you to watch if you'd like. In her place, I'd like to welcome Professor Stephen Naylor, Chair of Academic Board, who knows a thing or two about art, <laughs> so that's helpful, <laughs> and who is also a frequent visitor to our library to officially open the exhibition. Thank you, Stephen. It really does give me great pleasure to welcome you all here uh, to the Marbo Library. Um, and and it, it is a true opportunity to see exceptional work, uh, work of great diversity. Um, I, I look with interest at uh, the broad range of techniques that Rob has, um, has, has taken on board from his, his rapid sketches to his kind of scraper board works to fairly um, developed um, work on canvas. So it's, it, it really is a great opportunity for you all to, to sort of see the work um, of a, a, a talented um, Townsvillian, which is, which is terrific. Um, I acknowledge the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people as the first inhabitants of this country. Um, we pay our respect to the traditional owners of the land in which we stand today, the Wulgarukaba and the Bindle people. And in the spirit of reconciliation, we also acknowledge the valuable contribution Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to make to James Cook University and the broader community. I think it's really lovely that Grayson was here today. Um, it, it always makes me so proud to understand the rich and deep history that James Cook University has and that it is a shared history with our Indigenous people. Uh, this, this, this gives me great pride when I talk to people that, uh, that this, this is a place where it can happen, where we can acknowledge and work together and make great leaps forward. It's also a great pleasure, and I sort of look around the room at ex-students, colleagues, uh, friends and, and, and people from all over Townsville who, who obviously are looking for an opportunity to get out of that jolly Zoom environment that we all seem to be trapped in at the moment. So um, thanks so much for coming in uh, this afternoon to share this, this wonderful opportunity. Um, the exhibition opening today, of course, coincides with the naming of the uh, Eddie Koiki Marbo Library, and um, you know we can all remember those wonderful uh, events, you know, out there. Um, it was fairly hot, if I remember rightly, and the minister being here, and and dear Benita um, being at that that moment. It was just 
such a proud moment. I even remember it being broadcast across the, you know, the, the national airwaves that night when we got home and you know, Townsville was there. It's a, it's a great feeling and, to, and the, the fact that we continue that legacy through um, celebrating the, the Marbo family with Gail's involvement uh, in these annual exhibitions is just so important. It is just such a, a mark of respect for that family and a continuing in engagement. Um, un unfortunately, Gail's not, not here today, and, uh, but you, know, you, you just know how much involvement she had, and I, uh, I think I saw some photos of her and Rob standing, you know, sitting there talking about the concepts and, and, and linking those areas. And of course, it's, it's also important to sort of you know, know that, 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 that Eddie Queeky is, is, is there sort of overlooking us, and I'm, I'm sure his spirit is smiling uh, on this particular day um, about uh, what, what we are able to continue uh, to do together. Um, as I said, Rob Doomer is a Townsville-based artist um, whose tertiary qualifications in visual arts um, are, you know, central and, and certainly on display here today. He also, I think, epitomises what I've always considered um, when I was teaching in the, uh, in the creative arts is that it's not just about being able to make art, but it's also being able to uh, be an entrepreneur. It's also about using those skills and, and engaging. And his, his business as a tattooist uh, and his involvement in these sorts of exhibitions, I think, demonstrates that there is a place for contemporary art in the regions. And uh, you know, it's something that I know James Cook University has had visual arts courses here, and it's something that, uh, in these times, are really being challenged. Visual arts schools are being closed throughout the country at the moment, and there's much that that needs to be done. But it's a matter of reinventing an opportunity to bring the arts back into tertiary education, and it's something that I, uh, you know, I will certainly be throwing my weight behind. Uh, when the opportunity arises, um, but but certainly uh, Rob also engages, you know, with the um, the Townsville Urban Sketching Group, and um, I believe he was also the inaugural winner of the um, 2018 Napier Waller Prize at the um, Australian War Memorial. So what diverse skills this uh, this artist has, and. Um, uh, you know, I, I think of my art history, and Napier Waller is such an important person. Really quirky, and I'm, I, I can see a bit of that quirkiness coming through in Rob's work as well, which is um, terrific. Um, so I, I, I really do think that this is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate a slight twist in what we've done with the Marbo shows over the last few years, and running a um, an engaged activity over a period of time where multiple works have been generated um, really does show a maturity, I suppose, in our engagement with, um, with the Marbo uh, legacy show, which is, which is fabulous. Um, I'm delighted to hear that we're going to hear a bit more about the, um, the, the Marbo wall. Uh, it's a terrific um, feature and it's something that I think hasn't really been exposed because of COVID. So, um, Delighted to hear that that's, uh, that's going to take place. Um, and, uh, you know, it also saddens me the fact that, you know, this is our 50th year, you know, as we, we celebrate our anniversaries together, Graceland. Um, we haven't been able to do the uh, celebratory activities that, that we would have loved to have, um, would to have, loved to have done, uh, you know, had, had we not been under these kind of conditions, uh, let us say. Um, so I... I commiserate with, um, with Professor Sandra Harding, who would have loved to have been here and uh, would have done an infinitely better job than what I am, but um, I am proud to say this exhibition is officially open. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming and thank you very much, Grayson and Stephen, for your kind words. It's hard for me to actually believe that we're all standing here. I mean, given only a few weeks ago we were discussing that this may not actually go ahead. Uh, but I'm glad it has, obviously. These are indeed interesting times, and this residency has been full of challenges. Uh, firstly, the submission. I mean, for myself, I find it quite hard to string a few words together coherently just to address one theme, uh, let alone four, which was the people, place, knowledge and legacy. But I've, I've obviously tried to do that in this body of works that you'll see today. 
Uh, I came down and developed some sickness and vision issues in the first month as well, which was a little bit stressful on top of uh, juggling my tattoo business. And, and of course, obviously, the uh, COVID struck. And the impact on that was the government had enforced a shutdown on the tattooing industry. Uh, that was quite stressful with an unknown sort of financial future, but it did give me a couple of months to really sit in my studio, reflect on the sketches I've done, and sort of resolve my concept and produce this body of work. One of the biggest challenges I found was how to accurately discuss the legacy and the impact that Eddie Marbo had. I really need to thank uh, Aunty Dorothy, Aunty Graceland, Uncle Alfred and Eddie Savage for sharing your advice and wisdom. Gail, I absolutely treasure the uh, hours we spent, cups of tea in my studio and hers discussing her father and I got to know some uh, very intimate personal stories about Eddie which was resonated with me quite deeply and which was the driving influence behind producing the work behind me. I really started sketching quite quickly uh, day one and then soon realised that uh, an A4 sketch wasn't going to accurately sort of depict the library and the essence of that. So I immediately turned them into panoramics and then I felt much more comfortable in displaying the library in that sort of format. With uh, views into the garden, looking at the theme of place, the way the students interacted with the environment for people, uh, the objects from the art collection for knowledge and legacy, and of course, books, books and more books. And as the future is now, the way the students interact with the library is largely revolved around the internet, which is also reflected in some of the works. I'd always intended to create traditional representational works, but I really wanted to maximise this opportunity to explore more conceptual pieces that were driven by conversations that I had with staff and students about what they liked the most about the library. I really loved chatting with the students. They were naturally very curious about what I was doing, drawing over to the corner and it gave me the opportunity to speak to them about how art can benefit not only their studies, but potentially their careers long term. And as everyone has said, these engagements were recorded and blogged on my social media. I thought documenting the COVID impact was also an important part of the uh, residency. So I have made references throughout the works about the tension that was here in the library. The disappearing chairs and students, the social distancing and the emptiness, for example, can all be found in some of these works. In closing, I've absolutely loved my time here on the residency. I look forward to returning in my own time to explore and document changes even further, such as the new additions as the uh, fully soundproofed study booths on the top floor. I'd like to thank the entire library team. Everyone has been super friendly and extremely helpful. Matt for the amazing videos, making me look good and sound good. <laughs> Man's a wizard. I'd really like to thank Ron McBurney and Donna Foley for your advice and critique of my works during the production. I really need to say a special thanks to uh, Bernadette for your patience and tolerance of my uh, dismal communication abilities. And thank you to Bronwyn uh, and Helen for having the vision of this exhibition. Helen, again, uh, thank you for your flexibility. Like I, one thing I've learned um, that it was definitely my residency, but it's your library, and I totally <laughs> respect that. I feel that, in a sense, we've actually collaborated together to create this exhibition, and I'm really thankful for your direction. I'd also like to thank you, Helen, personally, <coughs> for pur purchasing additional works for the collection above the contractual obligation. I'm personally very proud to have these artworks in the collection alongside some truly amazing artists, some of whom are in the room. I'd really like to thank JCU for funding this residency. I really sincerely hope this is an excellent, um, this program continues. Uh, in honouring their commitment to supporting local artists, JCU has generously offered to take zero commission. So I've lowered my prices accordingly and your purchases will go directly towards helping me continue to sustain and develop my artwork. Uh, as Helen has said, I'll be doing several more art, art talks over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm always available for commissions and I look forward to your feedback if you'd like to talk about my art this afternoon. Thanks for your support.